Our next speaker is Dr. Manisha Singh from Bengaluru. Dr. Manisha Singh is an eminent gynecologist and a subspecialist in reproductive medicine surgery with over 20 years of extensive surgical experience. She's currently the head of reproductive medicine and surgery at Fortis Hospital, Bangalore. Prior to this, she was attached at St. Mary's University Teaching Hospital in the UK in uh, the unit of reproductive medicine and surgery. She's a recognized preceptor by RCOG and University of Surrey for minimal access surgery and for gynae ultrasound. Also, she is a recognized super speciality preceptor and assessor by RCOG for reproductive medicine and surgery. I now invite Manisha to talk on elective single embryo transfer to minimize the risk of multiple pregnancies. Um, it's been around for a few years now and uh, really there isn't anything new I'm going to say today except that I'm going to try and reiterate and reinforce and possibly try to drive home the message. So before I start, uh, there are a few people here. Hand on heart, how many of you promote elective single embryo transfer in your clinics? Nobody? I mean, unless it's a dire situation, do you go out and out, reach out to your patients and say elective single embryo transfer is what we need to do for you because you fit the bill. Well, nobody does it. In fact, last night, a group of my friends said to me, um, look, sweetheart, as much as we love you, we can't come for your lecture tomorrow morning because we don't really believe in single embryo transfer. So that just nailed the point home. Uh, so why, why are we, you know, um, so much against single embryo transfer when the evidence is all out there? Uh, because I think it's human nature. We believe that more is always better. I mean, as medics, we feel there are not enough doctors, there is not enough hospitals, there isn't enough funding, there aren't enough scanners, and of course, there aren't enough embryos to transfer because the more the embryos, the, more, the higher the pregnancy rate that you're going to have. But is it all about more or is it just having the right amount? We need to decide that. And we are not really helped because in this commercial world, you are absolutely bombarded with buy one, get one free. And that applies to embryos as well. You know, whether it's McDonald's or anything, glasses, you get buy one, get one free. So we are absolutely stuck in the middle. And we tend to forget some of the very important facts as we go along. And some of the previous speakers this morning have emphasized the complications associated with multiple pregnancies. I mean, although we contribute to about 2% of all the births, uh, we have 20% multiples contributed by IVF. And 40 to 60% of these twins need a NICU admission due to prematurity. And more than 10% would actually spend more than four weeks in the NICU. So all of this would, of course, put on tremendous pressure on the staff and the resources in managing such pregnancies. And to the extent that HFEA sa said that if you spent the money that we spent on the triplets in IVF services, we might be able to afford 2,000 extra IVF cycles on the NHS. And that is not a small amount because IVF on the NHS costs nothing less than four and a half thousand pounds. So it's not just about saving money, it's more about saving precious lives and making it better for people who don't have the facility to go ahead and have IVF. So we talk about SET today on the background of the fact that multiple embryo transfers increase the risk of multiple pregnancies, and single embryo transfer really, really needs to be considered seriously, but you have to balance it against the odds of getting a reasonable live birth rate in your clinic. So these are all the risks that are identified for the mother and the baby as far as multiple births goes. And what we should not forget in addition to all the medical complications is that some of the mums cannot actually cope and cannot handle twins or triplets effectively once they are born. And it puts in a significant financial burden on the family. And nonetheless, as it comes to the fetus, you have problems such as cerebral palsy multiplied four times, perinatal deaths multiplied almost six times. So you've got to take all of this into consideration and sell these facts to your patients effectively. 
So since the inception of IVF and ICSI commercially, we have seen a trend in rising live births. And as the number of singletons have gone up, and so have the number of multiples because of the number of embryos we transfer on a day-to-day -day basis. Thankfully, we have had some sense as clinicians, and we have tried to drop the number of embryos that we transfer, and therefore there has been a decline in the number of triplets that we have seen. So I'm just going to present very minimal data, two meta-analyses that actually drive home the point. Uh, the first one was uh, by Shiladitya in 2010, where he showed that, yes, you're right, when you do a two-embryo transfer, your live birth rate is double that of an elective single embryo transfer. But the multiple birth rate is also significantly higher. But what is important is that the, at term, a singleton birth is actually much more healthier than a singleton born after a double embryo transfer. And this is what the odds ratio look like. So although the odds ratio favor the double embryo transfer, in terms of multiple births, it's the elective single embryo transfer that actually is much better. And if you look at uh, the latest Cochrane review on the number of embryos to be transferred following IVF or ICSI, once again, we have the same message that double embryo transfer gives you a higher uh, birth rate uh, but the multiple pregnancy rate is also higher. And here you had 10 studies that actually looked at day two, day three embryos. And there were only two studies that looked at day five blastocyst transfers. But if you compare double embryo transfer to repeated single embryo transfer, and now in the NHS, there is a provision to offer one fresh IVF cycle in combination with one frozen IVF cycle. So that's the package deal. So if you were to offer a patient a fresh single embryo transfer with a single frozen embryo transfer and limit your embryos to one per transfer, you would get a comparable live birth rate to two embryo transfer. And once again, the multiple pregnancy rate would be as low as 2%. If you compare double embryo transfer to triple embryo transfer, you get no advantage or no benefit in terms of live birth rate. However, the multiple pregnancy rate significantly jumps if you do a three embryo transfer. HFEA, as we all know, is a regulatory body in the UK, and it's very tight on governing clinics. And the good thing that they did was they enforced that we have to progressively bring the multiple birth rate down. Of course, they have an agenda because they want to cut the cost on the NHS. And whether they give that extra funding towards those extra IVF cycles, I'm not very sure. But at least it brings down the multiple pregnancy rates. It decreases the pressure on the obstetricians and the NICU colleagues. So we have seen a progressive decline in the multiple birth rates from 31% to about 17% in 2012. And the message there is to bring the multiple pregnancy rate down to hopefully less than 10% by electively transferring single embryos and hopefully doing more of blastocyst transfers. That is if you have the patient cohort who can have blastocyst because now we know that not everybody can reach a blastocyst stage. But throughout this period of transition from 2008 to 2012, the pregnancy rate has been maintained at roughly around 30%. And this is what the statistics show, that whatever age you consider, the elective single embryo transfer pregnancy rates are maintained at about 39%, with a multiple rate of 1.5, and this is absolutely comparable to two embryo transfers. So, I bring home the point that embryo transfer policy for each clinic has to be specific to their patient characteristics. The cycle characteristics, whether it is the first cycle or the nth cycle that the patient is undergoing, what sort of embryos does she have, and is the funding by the patient or by the state or the government, and this doesn't apply in India because I don't think the government really funds anything except for some of the central government employees that get a bit of funding. So typically, if I'm sitting in the clinic, I would be asked questions such as, if you want to do an elective single embryo transfer, surely you have an agenda because you want to make more money out of me. The more the number of cycles I come to you for, the more the money you charge me. So is this just your way of getting more money out of me? And are you penalizing me because I know there are a lot of twins around that are absolutely fine and healthy, and I'm absolutely fit and healthy. I have the money to afford it, so why do you stop me? What if I disagree with your recommendation? And would, you, would that compromise my treatment in your clinic? And if I do agree with your policy of single embryo transfer, 
how good is your cryopreservation program and what is your success rate for SET? Now, in my clinic in Bangalore, uh, I'm offering SET to about 15 to 20 percent of patients who actually fit the bill. It's a relatively new concept. It's a little bit hard to digest, but somewhere down the line, you have to start promoting it. So this is what I give patients. This is the information leaflet that, that all of them get, that if you are less than 36 or equal to 36 and you have one embryo and you have spare good quality embryos that are suitable for freezing, I'd prefer to transfer a single embryo and freeze the rest. You may need a single embryo transfer because medically you do need to have only one embryo transferred. And of course, electively, if you personally choose, I wouldn't say no. However, if you have only two embryos and you do not have surplus embryos for freezing, then I would rather do a two embryo transfer than offer you a single embryo and discard the remaining. However, if you are more than or equal to 37 years, and unless you have a medical reason, I would prefer to do a two embryo transfer. You can choose to have a single embryo transfer depending on your wishes. And this is the leaflet that all my patients get when they come to start the cycle. That is, this is a kind of uh, um, an outline of the strategy that we would adopt for the embryo transfer, depending on how many embryos we generate through an IVF cycle. So basically, it emphasizes the slide that I showed previously. So it is up to every clinician and every clinic to optimize the way forward in terms of single embryo transfer. Whether you decide to choose the best embryo by resorting to metabolomics, whether you decide to go down the route of trophectodum grading, whether you use the very posh embryoscope to do time-lapse imaging, all said and done, whatever you do, ensure that you have a good cryopreservation program and that your counseling facilities are absolutely top-notch if you want to drive home the message. So I plead on behalf of all the obstetricians and the neonatologists and all the parents of multiple pregnancies that please pledge and support the concept of one at a time. Thank you very much.